Hello, Miami! Hello, Miami! Oh, man, this is awesome. I come back here uh, as often as I can. We are now towards the end of a very long tour, and normally Ben would be up here introducing me, our not campaign manager. Please give it up for Ben Farmer. All right, man. He's been on the road with me for over three months now, and uh, we're still, still live. So. But I just I, I want to take the privilege of, of opening things up here in Miami for a couple reasons. One is that we have a really cool crew developing here. Every time I come back to Miami, I see a lot of the same passionate faces who are driving the movement here, who are making events like this possible. So I really appreciate that. And I want to say to everybody who is making the libertarian community, a thing here where you all feel welcome, you can make events like this happen, please give it up for yourselves. Woo! Now, it was a really fun experience for Ben, who's from Texas, to be able to say that, hey, we're so far south, people are trying to talk to him in Spanish. <laughs> That's what happened here. Obviously, I don't have to tell you guys anything about Florida or Cuba that you don't already know way better than I do. But tonight, one of the reasons I'm opening things up is because I'm really honored to be presenting a friend of mine who has been traveling with us on the road also for this whole three months, and he has been very involved with the LP of Cuba, and he's been first involved with LP Nevada. As you know, there's a lot going on with LP Cuba that I think people here have a lot of interest in and a lot of opportunities to get engaged with. So without further ado, to tell you about what's going on with LP Cuba and the rest of his activism, please give it up for Zach Foster. Uh, no. Ole! <laughs> Alright, so good evening, everybody. Thank you for lending me your ears. I'm going to tell you a few things about El Partido Libertario Cubano Jose Martí, the Cuban Libertarian Party, which, yes, I swear to God, it exists. It is a real thing. It is a, an honor and a privilege for me to be involved with these wonderful, wonderful people. It's an honor for me to be speaking with you here in Miami. I know many of you guys are Cuban American. Miami is a special city because inside the city there's a very even more special place called Little Havana. And in my opinion, Little Havana is one of the greatest cities in America because it is a free city. And the reason Little Havana is a free city is because there are so many people here who got here the hard way, who had to suffer, who actually know what it is to live under an oppressive regime. The people here in Little Havana know that the fight against communism it's not against some jackass college students in Berkeley. The fight against real communism and sadism is happening right there on that island because there are two libertarians who are currently incarcerated in the Gulag in Menena del Sur. They were originally arrested for being part of this new little fledgling book club, which used to call itself Mises Cuba. Well, since then, they became the Cuban Libertarian Party, and they're going to launch a real Mises Institute in the next couple of months. However, they now exist in three provinces. We've got two chapters in Havana, we have another chapter in Pinata del Rio province, and we have yet another chapter in Camacuay province. And it's been uh, non-stop craziness ever since we got involved. There's a logo for our Mises Mambi Institute. So these are our two gentlemen right here. They are incarcerated. The man on the left is Manuel Velasquez Vicea. The man on the right is Bubaldo Herrera Hernandez. Both of them are Havana residents. They were literally arrested for reading and passing around the wrong books. However, obviously it was a falsified charge. Since those guys got arrested, the small group of libertarians in Havana got pissed off and they decided to organize. They jumped on the Facebook libertarian groups with their few, credit, their few hours of credit that they can get on their internet rations. And if they happen to find one guy who happens to speak Spanish, me. And that's how I got involved with them. They asked me for my help. They dropped it in my lap. I couldn't say no anymore because I knew that these people existed. Today, almost six months later, we're in three provinces. We've got uh, international activists in the United States, in multiple states, also in Mexico and in Spain. On top of that, we've got some very special activists. This lady right here is uh, Caridad Ramirez. She's the chap uh, president of one of the chapters in Havana. And the man on the right, that's Eduardo. This particular day, they did something very brilliant. They brought a couple of decoy cell phones to the prison so that they would get found in the search and confiscated. And then they brought out the real one, and then they were able to report a quick testimony from Ubaldo on the horrors that are really going on inside that prison. This might come as a surprise to some of you, but 
Cuban socialist health care is actually not that hot and quite non-existent in the prison. I know, totally insane, right? Nobody would have imagined. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say about these patriots right now. However, we are looking for people, all right? We are looking for Cuban Americans to help us get involved. And we're not just doing this because we want to use your relatives back on the island as political capital. We understand you, know, you want to protect them. However, we want you to reach out to Cuban exiles here in the Miami area. Convert them to libertarianism. Get them plugged into LP Florida. Because once you sell the Cuban exiles here and break them of their Stockholm Syndrome for the Republican Party, who has only helped the Cuban dictatorship instead of opposed it, if we can just get them to break their Stockholm Syndrome for the GOP and become libertarian, then they'll get in contact with their people on the island and they'll get them back in touch with us. If nothing else, this movement is growing. Cuban libertarians are true libertarians because they know that capitalism works. They see it from afar. They're experimenting with it in Havana. And they want more, ladies and gentlemen. They want more freedom. On top of that, we have new allies in El Movimiento Libertario de Venezuela, the Venezuelan Libertarian Parties. These are two personal friends of mine. This is Yomar Moreno and Luis Ojeda. They are student organizers. They are also co-authors of a uh, short book that the Mises Mambi Institute is going to publish very soon. Luis is also the author of a number of very important articles we're looking forward to publishing, uh, basically going into details about the shady associations between the Castro regime and the Chavez and Maduro regimes down in Venezuela. As a matter of fact, one of our sympathizers down in Venezuela sent us photographs of supposedly a dead Venezuelan soldier. They went through the man's pockets. They found his documents. Sure as hell, he's a Cuban citizen, Cuban intelligence, in the Bolivarian Venezuela uniform. So there's a lot of really important updates happening. If you want to get plugged in with these people, for starters, talk with me after Adam's talk. Also, please go on Facebook, right? Go to my page, facebook.com slash Foster Libertarian, and at the very top you'll see links to Movimiento Libertario de Venezuela, uh, Partido Libertario Cubano, and El Instituto Mises Mandi. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We are bringing liberty back to Cuba and Venezuela. Questions after his presentation. <laughs> Zach, thank you. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Hey, this is the Taxation Inspector. Welcome. My yeah! yeah! So what we've... I'm Ben Farmer, by the way. 